Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's Why Upgrade to Spider 5 webinar. I'm Boris Backman from Datacolor, and with me here tonight, it's Oliver Muse. Oliver, may you introduce yourself, please? Oliver? Yes, hello. Good evening. My name is Oliver Muse. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Great. Oliver. Okay, so we have a little delay here. Yeah, we have a little, we have a little delay uh, this this evening here. So, hello, I'm Oliver. Um, I'm um, a, let me say customer service responsible person from Data Color, and I am a photographer as well. So I think this is quite interesting to know um, tonight, just because of I will give you a few hints from a photographer's perspective. Okay, so this webinar tonight is about why about why to upgrade to Spider 5, and due to the reason we have three different versions of Spider 5, the question to answer which version is the right for me, which was Spider 5 version, and um, this will give us a webinar of about let's say 45 to 50. 60 minutes, something is within between. At, at the end, you can enter all the questions you have, and Oliver and I, we will answer them as good as we can. Okay, so let's have a short overview about the Spider 5 history. So the previous versions, and we are starting back in 2001 with the ColorVision Monitor Spider. So the very first Spider, it's now more than 14 years ago. Okay, and then in 2004 we continued with the Spider 2 that was replaced in 2007 by the Spider 3. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this one, even from the shape. And uh, the Spider 3 was replaced in 2012 by Spider 4. But this year, 2015 in April, we had a new Spider 5, a new sensor, new shape, new technology, new design, and um, let's have a closer look. Why is it worth to go for this new Spider 5 generation? And um, again, we have three different models. We have the Spider 5 Express, we have the Spider 5 Pro, and the Spider 5 Elite. And also, we will point out which version will be the right for you, individual um, situation to go for. Okay, first, all three Spider 5 versions share the same hardware because we want to say we want to have the same high quality sensor, whatever model you choose. Okay, good. What's new? We have a smaller footprint. So, yeah, the very first is to say, okay, it's for easy storage and it's more convenient because from the smaller footprint. But this is not the really big argument, but an argument to have a smaller footprint size here is that this is suitable to calibrate curved screens. And I don't know if you are aware of this, but during the last nine months, three different vendors um, entered with curved computer display monitors um, in the market. A lot of them are with a ratio of 21 to 9, and so um, they're quite new, but with this smaller footprint, of course, it's much easier to calibrate those curve screens. Okay, so an interesting argument, um, especially for the future. Okay, what else? We have a sensor lens cap, and this sensor lens cap is made to make sure the optics keep to be clean. Because if you have a look at the previous spider generations and um, you place them in front of your computer to measure the room light, uh, you have always the honeycomb filter open and uncovered so it could get up some, some dust uh, and collect some dust here. So by this lens cap, you can make sure the spider stays more clean than ever before. Okay, good. What else can be done by this sensor lens cap? Um, a very interesting um, idea behind. You see, the sensor lens cap, as it is attached to the cord, 
it's also used as counterweight here. And you can see you can adjust the counterweight position very easy to make sure it fits to your individual moniker configuration. And of course, with the Spider 5, you can calibrate all common desktop and laptop displays. Good. Let's have a closer look here. We also have something uh, integrated, the tripod mount. In the past, we had a stand where you could place the spider, and this stand con uh, also contained the tripod mount that is necessary if you do front projector calibration. This is a feature only in combination with the Spider 5 Elite. And now, you don't have to search for the stand anymore. It's just integrated in the Spider 5, so even more convenient here. Good. What else? We have a closer look inside the uh, sensor now, so inside the case. And the main changes are we have an encapsulated optical module there. So um, this means we have inside the Spider 5 case, we have one component which contains all optical components as one compact module. This is important, you see, because today you have more and more bigger monitors, 27 inch and even 30 inch or bigger monitors is very common today. A couple of years, this wasn't the situation we had 21 inch, 20 inch, 24 inch maybe, but the 24 inch, they were large monitors. Today, they're quite the normal situation. And if you think about those uh, large monitors, yeah, you will um, attach with the counterweight the spider doing the calibration on the screen, but when you remove, yeah, you have to stand up and so on. So monitors have grown, our arm lengths did not. So by accident, we, we receive a lot of uh, uh, feedback, okay, spider was falling down, not a problem at all, but sometimes it can be. And for those situation, because we have now an encapsulated module here, this is more resistant to mechanical stress and any kind of environmental stress. So it's an additional protection here. And this is a really a good improvement. Okay, and what else? We have, if you have a look at the bottom now where you can see the honeycomb filter, uh, the smaller baffle diameter, uh, it helps a lot to reduce stray light and room light that comes from the side because the plastic is even thicker than ever before and the smaller size here that prevents stray light to come in. Okay, and that helps. We want to measure the light that comes from the monitor, the direct light, nothing else. Okay, again, that helps to improve the quality. So what else? We have an industry patented seven detector optical engine. So that means we have this in combination with a high stability double shielded filters for a long life time. And if you have a closer look now, you can see inside the case of the encapsulated optical module and outside the uh, case that you can see as the Spider 5 case. So you see the protection of all optical components here that helps to make sure you have a long life time from the spider and you have a high quality sensor. Okay, what is the advantage out of this uh, design here? The, there's a very simple advantage what we have generated from this design. It improves the accuracy. And we say it's up to 55% improvement on low luminance accuracy. And of course we say it's up to 55% because if you have a really high-end monitor like the high-end ISOs, um, 
the really high end ones here. You won't have that much of improvement, but if you have, let's say, a, a normal, a mid range or an, an entry level monitor, uh, the improvement will be up to these 55%. And what's the benefit out of this. It gives you a much more accurate shadow details. What you can see in this image over here, this was the before situation and this is what you can see afterwards. And also as a consequence, we have smoother gradients. But I think, Oliver, there's something mm -hmm. from your side I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right, right, right. Especially in darker luminances or in darker um, shadow details, we are looking for bending and so on, try to avoid that. But um, for me as a photographer, I really would like to mention that it is very important to calibrate and to use a screen not in full daylight. That means in a very bright room. So um, please try to, uh, let me say to shut the blinds, try to darken the room and use the monitor in a hmm, dim light condition. What does it mean? Uh, if you are able to read a short article in a newspaper without switching on the lines, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. If you uh, would be able to read the whole newspaper in that light condition, believe me, then you are setting too bright. So that means the monitor has uh, an optimal um, an optimal um, luminance or brightness level where it's um, yeah in best condition in best quality and this is when your ambient light is quite low so calibrate and work with your monitor in a lower ambient light condition that would be best Okay, thank you. This is about the spider technology, about the hardware changes and the hardware improvement and what you have as a benefit out of this. But that's not everything. We haven't done much more. You see, on the other, on the next step, well, let's have a look at the new software. And we have also software improvements here. We have a quick and easy to handle uh, Spider 5 software. This means, um, if you work with this Spider 5 software, and let's have a closer look here. Um, here, it's the situation where it can, you, the software will ask you, okay, please um, place the spider over here. Okay, so what you're doing, you place the spider in front of the monitor, it's automatically uh, starting its measurements, and during the um, profile creation, you will save at the end of the profile, the profile is automatically activated and this uh, first calibration will take about five minutes here. So you don't have to do anything at the end, just the system will activate this new profile and this will take you five minutes. And if you do the recalibration in let's say a few weeks, and you have a Spider 5 Pro or a Spider 5 Elite, you can do a recalibration that will take five minutes. If you have the Spider 5 Express, again, you have to go through the entire process. So again, just five minutes. But if you think about how many time you will spend on image, um, image editing, five minutes, it's also okay. But of course, 2.5, so two and a half minutes is much faster here. Okay. What else? We have modified the software. We have uh, a new software here where we have a software with a, with a dynamic help function. This is something really important. And I know, um, Oliver, I think you would like to have a detail yeah. view look no, into this. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. right. Right. Um, I, I would like to see how that works, just because of it. Um, you, you said it's a dynamic help function. So yeah. um, just show us how that okay. works. Okay. Okay. Um, here you see the software, like a lot of you are more or less uh, uh, already familiar with. But what's new? We have a little triangle button up here, and if I press this. Uh, we have the interactive help on the right. And this interactive help window will 
explain you by a mouse over effect wherever you are pointing at on the main window. It explains all options, it will guide you through the process, that means for those who are quite new to this, they will have all information what to do. And for those who have, let's say, a pro or a, an elite version and want to go into uh, some deeper options in some uh, um, selections you will be asked to do, you will not get only the information what to select, it also explains why to select which option. And that's important because that gives you all the knowledge you need to know to decide what is the right selection to choose for your individual situation. Okay, helps you to get a better quality of calibration. And because that's very important, I'd like to show you a few samples here. Okay, for example, here you have a look at the calibration settings. And very often in the past we have, okay, what is a full cull, what is a recall, and so on. Let's start with a recall. I just go up there with the mouse and you get all the information about the recall and you get not only the information what it takes uh, speed up your calibration process, it's also the information that from time to time you should do a full cull. So that keeps the high quality of the calibration up here. And also, what about the full cull? Yeah, okay, just click on, I have to click on here, but you just go with the mouse and you will see the information there. So it will take longer, but gives you a, a higher quality of calibration here. Or let's go to the more technical uh, information and uh, options to select on a Spider 5. Mm -hmm. For example, go for the gamma. Oliver. Yeah, so here's something that I uh, would like to add. Um, all these different settings like the gamma and the white point and, and brightness. So I would say we get this question on a, on an almost daily basis. Um, what is the right target for me? So you have different gamma and white point settings. What does that mean for me? Um, this is quite simple uh, to explain. This depends on your workflow. That means if you are working in sRGB, so it's the color space you are working with. If you're working with sRGB or with Adobe RGB 9098, then, and look at the screenshot there, Gamma 2.2 recommended. 6500 Kelvin recommended. This is the target that you need to calibrate your monitor too. So please um, enter or read these information about that and you will see it also in the dynamic help. Okay, great. And uh, when you finish this, the selection here or just to, you said, okay, that's it. You just click on next and here the next will get us to the situation when we get started with the Spider 5. So that means if you are receiving your Spider 5 and unboxing Spider 5 and opening the box the very first time. If you do this, um, a lot of people will search for a CD-ROM with the software. Sorry, there's no CD-ROM in the box. You have a link and if you open the box, the very uh, first paper you will see at the top is this one here. That says thank you. And there's a link. You can download the software from here. So question is why did we do this? Very simple uh, explanation. We found out that the spider is used for a couple of years. And within that time, um, a lot of customers will replace at least one time their computer or just reinstall the computer system by upgrading to a new operating system and so on. And in the past, 
at tech support we received a lot of questions oh I inserted my CD-ROM from the package in my brand new computer and it doesn't work yes of course because software can be outdated on new operating systems so that's the reason why everybody asks for an update and of course the CD-ROM will not contain the update but by this link we can make sure that you will get to this new page a centralized uh, page where you find all the information that's the reason why we call it our welcome page our customer care page that will contain all videos software downloads which is always up to date quick start guides, user guides, and access to support and the knowledge base. Let's have a closer look on this. So whenever you download the software, it's the up-to-date software, so you can be sure it will work on your operating system, on the new ones. Okay, never ever run an outdated CD-ROM. So when you have a look, closer look at the Spider 5 welcome page, um, first you get all the information when getting started with the Spider 5. So unboxing is explained what to do, where to download the software, how to install the software, about the activation process. So all information. If you are not familiar, if you're insecure, you will find in here. Next is that we have the quick start. We have a quick start guide in different languages, of course, but you can see from this little uh, drawing here, warm up the monitor, install the software, activate, place the spider on the monitor, and here you can see how it works with the lens cap, and then calibrate. And for those who are not familiar with the calibration process at the very first time, no problem at all. Beside from downloading the software down here, you will see also a demonstration in uh, a video on a calibration the very first time. One video on the Spider 5 Express and another video that covers the Spider 5 Pro and Spider 5 Elite. And as mentioned before, the user guide, so you get all information just at your fingertips, just in one place. And if there are still additional questions, we have our knowledge base right away here and access to the technical support, to our free support by submitting a ticket, no problem at all. Okay, that is how to get started with the Spider 5. Now it's still the question to answer here in this webinar, what is the right model for you to choose? And we have a little information on this underneath each spider here. So for the Spider 5 Express, we say it's targeting the hobbyist photographers, those who are seeking for a simple monitor calibration solution. We will have a closer look in a few seconds. And those who say, okay, I take photography a little bit more serious. Uh, I have some more demands on my monitor calibration. I want to see, okay, what is the best setting on my monitor? I want to know about the brightness because I do some prints myself or via a printing service. And then brightness, monitor brightness is a very important point. And if you're in that direction, if you're on this way, it's the Spider 5 Pro to go for. And for all those who say, oh, I, I have a front projector I want to calibrate. I want to adjust monitors among each other. I want to have all high quality advanced uh, calibration features. Because I'm a professional, then it's time to go for the Spider 5 Elite. Okay, and now we will have a closer look first at the Spider 5 Express here. Okay, the Spider 5 Express. It comes with the new Spider 5 sensor, as mentioned before. Uh, this was the encapsulated optical unit, and it covers also the up to 55% improvement on low luminance accuracy. What else? You have a very easy to handle 
calibration software. It just calibrates at gamma 2.2 and 6500 Kelvin. So you don't have options to choose from because you will just go through the calibration process, very easy, very simple, a four-step calibration process. Okay, and there's something new, and I think it's something for Oliver now. Multi-monitor mm -hmm. calibration, what does it mean, Oliver? Could you please explain? Um, yes, I do, um, or I will. Uh, Spider 5 Express now supports a multi-monitor calibration, which sounds a bit, hmm, wait. Uh, with an older Spider Express, I was also able to calibrate my monitor and the other monitor which is on my older computer. So, huh? yep, but the, Fider, the Spider 5 Express is able to do that on one system. That means it calibrates um, your computer and an external screen, for example, on your laptop and so on. So, um, if you need to work on an extended desktop, which means you need to align different monitors or to match these monitors, then you need a bit something else. But we will talk about that a bit later. So, but yes, the Spire 5 Express supports a second screen on your mon on your computer. So it's an ideal um, solution if I have a laptop out in the field, and if back at home I have my huge high quality desktop uh, monitor attached to my uh, laptop. Okay, so now you have both calibrated, and at home you work on your desktop monitor and. If you're in the field, you work in the laptop monitor, so you have both calibrated. No problem. That's great. Good. Okay. That's all on the Spider 5 Express, and we will take the next step for the Spider 5 Pro. As I mentioned before, for those who need a little bit more, and let's have a closer look. The Spider 5 Pro covers all functions from the Spider 5 Express. Okay. Good. What else? We have the gamma graph uh, for the monitors, so you can see the amount of percentage your monitor is covering uh, of sRGB, or you can compare it to Adobe RGB and so on. What else? We have the option to do the recalibration. Two and a half minutes, and here you can see how to select this. Okay, just the recall. And if I am unsecure about this, and no problem, you just use the mouse with the mouse over effect. You get the information in the interactive help. And if you are still not have enough information, just click on learn more. The entire help has been. Uh, rewritten so it's more easy, more simple to understand, but it also covers more background information. So we cover the entire, um, yeah, the entire uh, information from the beginners up to the experts here. Okay, recalibration to uh, two and a half minutes. Okay, that's quite fast. Good. What else can we do? If we go to the calibration settings, and this is what I've selected here, now we have the possibility to change the gamma, the white point, and say, okay, we want a room light measured or not measured. But Oliver, yeah. please tell us a little bit more. Right. Yeah, right. So um, why do we have um, different gamma and white point uh, uh, settings here? So you know that I mentioned already um, if you work with sRGB and Adobe RGB 1998 that you need to calibrate to gamma 2.2 and 6500 Kelvin. But what if your workflow is not sRGB or Adobe RGB, it's Profoto RGB? And then, of course, you need another target. Or you want to do pre-press workflow. So that means you need to calibrate, for example, to gamma 1.8 which is a bit more, let me say, flat in contrast. 
So for all those purposes, you need to, to change the target here in the software um, to another gamma or another white point value. Okay, great. And we have the room light, which you can yeah. turn on and off. And the room light allows you to measure the room light in three different levels. And because that's very, very important um, here for all those who print their images, either mm -hmm. this themselves or via a printing service, Oliver, please explain this a little bit more deeply here. Yes. Um, because of it, it's very, very important for us as photographers. So as long as you are printing your own images with your own printer or a printing service, that doesn't matter. Um, as long as you are printing your images, you need to take care of the brightness of your of your um, photos or your your files. Why? It's just because of a monitor and a printout is so different. Um, your monitor is a light source and you are looking directly into that light source. And um, if, if you have a magazine or a photo on your desk at the moment, so just compare it. Compare the white on the paper together with the white of the monitor. Is it as bright as the monitor, the printout? I could bet it's not. It's lower. It's lower in because of it's just reflecting the light that is surrounding you. Do the same with black. Do you see that the monitor black is very deep? Compare it with the black on a printout. This has always a rest reflection. So that means it's not as dark as the monitor black, but what the spider um, can do now is on the back of the spider is a room light sensor. And that room light sensor looks into your room, sees, oh, it's this and this level, which means three different levels, which means dark, medium, or high. And hopefully you are sitting medium or dark and not in a high um, ambient light level. And then it compares that and it sees, oh, a uh, printout in that condition would have that and that contrast characteristic. And you see it, the, the smaller arrow, print out. This would be the limit and there's the line and the monitor is much above that. And now when you calibrate your monitor, the monitor will be limited in contrast uh, wise to the level of your printouts and then <laughs> It fits, and you won't ever experience again that your monitor or the, your images on the monitor were fine, but then when you printed them, it was, whoa, two, three f-stops less and too dark. This won't happen again. But therefore, you need the ambient light sensor, which comes with the Spider 5 Pro, or but Boris will mention that with the Spider 5 Elite. This is not included in Spider 5 Express. Okay, great, thank you. So that's uh, important for all those who are printing in whatever way their images. Okay, good, good to know this, but there's much more with the Spider 5 Pro software. You have, at the end of the calibration, um, a view on your monitor with the new profile. So that you can preview your new, your new profile. And you can also switch to the uncalibrated state. So this is what is given by the spider proof. This 16 images you can select um, four or a single one out of here. But what is new here? These are given images, and everybody in the past say, oh, I'd like to have my own images to see the new profile, to compare between the uncalibrated and the calibrated state of my monitor. Okay, that's what you can do now. So in the past, you have this. You can switch, click switch button, and your uncalibrated state, you are in the calibrated state by clicking switch again, and now you have the possibility just by drag and drop or by open custom, you can now open 
your own TIFF or JPEG files and you can see them in calibrated state or uncalibrated state and click again switch to calibrated. So that's the way how you can use your own images, the images you are familiar with to see okay if the monitor looks okay. Good, that's good to know. Okay, what else? We have the display analysis and the display analysis is also something for those who say okay I want to have a higher quality of my monitor calibration. Because if you have a look at a lot of monitors, especially the mid-range or entry-level monitors, very often they do not have any controls like in the good old times. They are just coming with some presets, presets given by the manufacturer, say, okay, it's video, it's film, it's uh, uh, office, it's, it's sRGB, okay, that's it. But what is behind those presets? And it's the best way to say, okay, first set your monitor by selecting the best settings, the best preset here, as you have no other alternatives, that is as close as possible to the target you want to go with the calibration. And unfortunately, as I mentioned, the manufacturers do not tell us much about what's behind. What's the white point of movie setting, of sRGB setting? sRGB, okay, it should be something around 6500 Kelvin. Yeah, but who knows? Okay, so what can you do? You go to the display analysis and you just select white point at different on-screen display settings. And you will be asked, okay, please select the settings you have, name them here, and then the software with the Spider 5 Pro sensor, it's also a function which is in the Spider 5 Elite, will be able to help you to get the information what's behind those settings, and that will help you to select what's the best for your monitor to start to choose before you go to run the calibration. Okay, that's what the display analysis is for. Good. What else? That was the Spider 5 and that will take us to the Spider 5 Elite. So Spider 5 Pro, we're now going on Spider 5 Elite and the Spider 5 Elite covers all functions from the Spider 5 Pro, of course, but much more. We have now the room light measurement in five levels, that's even a higher precise adjustment on brightness, on the monitor brightness, but also here we have more really interesting and helpful um, things to cover. Okay, we have an expert console, an expert console that allows you to access additional calibration targets, Oliver. So, what are they for? Please explain. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I mentioned these sRGB, Adobe RGB, and and that prepress workflow and so on. But here's even more. We have targets like L Star, which is a special, uh, a very special uh, um, color space that doesn't contain a gamma it, uh, tone response curve. It's a. Uh, let me let me describe that with a double double s tone response curve i think that fits quite good so this is um something special which is um trying to to cover both that means display colors and printout colors but um high professional photographers they use that workflow um others not but here's some um more targets like Rec 709 or Rec 2020, which is the uh, the standard of uh, full HD uh, workflow. And then we have other video standards like PAL, SICAM, Sinian, uh, NTSC, and all that stuff. So 
um, you see even if you do a bit more than just photography, uh, Spider 5 Elite is the tool to go with. And it's the most flexible tool. So even if you want to create your own gamma curve, you could do it. Or if you uh, want to create a non-gamma curve, yes, Spider 5 Elite is very flexible with all that. And what you can do, you can create your own settings regarding white point, gamma, and also brightness here, and you can save them as new presets. So you can do this in the expert console, save them, and then you have access also in a different way. I'll show you in a minute. And what else to point out here? You see, you have a lot of options in the expert console. And if you do have access to the expert console the very first time, you will say, OK, what's it for? And again, you just use the mouse over effect, and you get all the information in the interactive help. OK. That will help you if you're not familiar with this and you want to uh, have a higher quality. Okay. So, and as I mentioned before, um, as soon as you have created your individual settings for yourself and you say, okay, I don't want to go to the expert console every time, you have these settings also in here in the list so you can select your own settings and that's helpful. But there is more and what is important, not the room light also we have already mentioned before, but we have now another function that is called gray balance calibration. Enhanced gray balance mm -hmm. calibration. Oliver, please tell us what's, the, what's behind yep. here. Right. Um, so I really like that uh, feature. It is you see it on the on the on the little um, drop down menu. Um, it's called better here in this case. There's another entry which is faster, which is the the default setting. Um, I really like that, and I use it with uh, each of my calibrations. Um, better means. Uh, it calibrates your monitor when it equalizes, or the, the correct word is when it linearizes your color primaries, red, uh, red green, and blue. Um, it not just measures the color, um, it also tries to see where is the worst point of your monitor gradient, and it adds automatically then at this area, more and more measurement points to to increase the density of measurement points of color references, and um, with this process, it um, smoothens your profiles. So it's really even better than than without that function. Um, if you or, or what I need to mention here at this point is there is a little little. Hmm, I don't like the word disadvantage, but there is no other. So, so there's a little disadvantage with that feature. Um, it takes a bit longer to calibrate your monitor. It's not that five-minute calibration. Then it can take six or hmm, sometimes seven minutes. But if you ask me, I don't care. I want to calibrate my monitor, and I want to do it as best as possible. So, of course, I use that with each of my calibrations. Okay, great. What well, else the Spider 5 Elite covers? The Spider 5 Elite comes with the possibility to do front projector calibration. And here you can see how this is handled. Um, you will attach the Spider 5, 5 Elite sensor to a tripod to place it about uh, 30 centimeters in front of the screen. And this is the way it will measure and calibrate your front projector. And now you can see why is it good to have this um, monitor tripod mount inside so you don't have to search for anything. That's it. That's the advantage here. OK, great. Next, have a look at the spider proof. We have seen the spider proof from the Spider 5 Pro already, and we have seen the option to select your own custom um, images to see the uncalibrated and calibrated state. Okay, what else is new here? 
you can do this with this given images and also with your own images and you can do this now in full screen mode. Think about those uh, uh, situation where you have a 27, 30 inch monitor and the software, of course, the software window itself will cover only a certain area of the entire monitor. But now you can say, okay, I want to see this comparison in full screen. So you can have a look and you can see, okay, you get this uh, information all over for a certain time. It will fade away. You're looking at the calibrated view. You can toggle by just uh, using the space bar from the uncalibrated to the calibrated view. So you can do this on the entire monitor now, a full screen mode. And think about uh, you want to check your monitor and use a solid gray image, for example, just to compare to see where are the limitations of this monitor. OK, good and advanced feature here. Also, we have this function called Studio Match. Oliver, you mentioned this function yeah. in the past already. Right, right. I mentioned it before, right. I mentioned it before. Um, yeah, the Studio Match is, you remember that I said that the Spire 5 uh, Express is able to calibrate more than one monitor on your computer, but if you extend the monitors as an extended desktop, then you need to to match them, to align them, to, 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 to make them equal. And this is what um, Studio Match is made for. So that means one of your monitor could have a brighter white point and maybe the other has a darker black point or even one of the monitors has um, both uh, best. So what you need is to match the monitors with all those, um, um, yeah, points or white points or, or, or color references. And this is what um, Studio Match can do for you in an automated process. So that means you can align one monitor to the other by using one monitor as calibration target. Okay, good. Especially yeah. for those who have different monitors. One is covering, let's say, a, a wider color space and the other right. one not. So let's good. And we have another function here, the spider tune. It, it, it goes in a similar absolutely. direction, I guess, right? I, absolutely. So spider tune is on top of the studio match. That means if you need to match your both monitors, then of course you want to, 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 to make them equal. But huh? what, wait, 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 what is that? If I calibrate both of my screens, uh, why should I need to match them in the end? They are equal then in this case, right? Uh, yes, for your spider or for a sensor, they are equal, yes. But there is something um, additional, additional on your desk. <laughs> and this is uh, you. <laughs> Just because of our eyes, or no, it's not the eye, it's our brain. We have a kind of let, let's call it um, an inbuilt auto white point correction, like your camera. So look, when it's when the sun sets outside and it's 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 going to be very bluish outside. We call that the blue hour in 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 the German language. So go outside, or if you are inside and you look out, it looks so bluish. But then go outside and you see, mm, yeah, it's still bluish, but not that blue that I expected. Now look back into the room and you see that the light in the room is so uh, yellowish golden, you would bet, no, it's not that color normally. Um, it, it, it looks more neutral. And this is what our color perception is doing here. So we try to, to neutralize our light where we are in or our surrounding light. We try to neutralize that. And this is what we also do when we work with two different monitors. So let me, let me um, explain that, that um, example here. So you have your older screen, 
which is a 20 inch monitor. So a flat panel monitor, but the light source inside is CCFL. But your newer monitor, which is a 27 or 30 or even 32 inch, however, this is white LED, and which is good. It's cheaper, it's more uniform, Boris will uh, talk about that a bit later. It's, uh, it, it doesn't need that much power compared to the CCFL, so everything is best with the LED screens. But did you ever compare colors between a photo that is illuminated by a CCFL and the same picture, but illuminated by an LED torch. It looks so different. And yes, your eye need to compensate that because of it has this light has a different spectrum. So, and this is what we are doing, and we can't avoid it. So, you are sitting in front of your huge 30-inch LED whatever monitor, which has LED light, and your eyes or your brain is compensating that LED spectrum, which is good and fine. But now you look into the left on your older monitor, which has that CCFL, and this looks color-casted. What is going wrong here? It's just because of your setting doesn't fit to that kind of light source. And now, to compensate that, there is no, no tool or feature on the market that could solve this issue. Only, yes, the Spider Tune feature. So, Spider Tune gives you that screen that you see here on the monitor, and you have several sliders for blue, red tint, or purple, green tint, and gamma lower, higher, and so on. So, please spend ah, five minutes, even less, and use the sliders on your second monitor to match your new big monitor. You, after these five minutes, you are done and it looks the same. Why do you need to do that manually by eyeball and, and uh, because of it's your color perception. If I would sit next to you and I would look on your monitors and I would compare them, I would say, huh, what is wrong here? They are still, still different. And if I match them, the second monitor to the big one, you would see a difference. And that is the reason why we need to do that manually um, by ourselves. But it's really not a big deal. Five minutes and it's a match. Okay, great. And one additional information on this. Um, scientists call this metamorphism. And so if you want to look this up, this effect, it's just uh, something really advanced but important due to the reason today we have so many different panel technologies in our monitors so it becomes more and more important here and we have more and more people working with different monitors at the same time so it's worth to have a look at okay let's continue um, we have mentioned the analysis function with the Spider 5 Pro. Now the Spider 5 Elite has an enhanced display analysis and this will cover all the points we have seen before and new points to go for screen uniformity, color accuracy. And if you ever have read a review about a monitor, a test about monitors, a comparison on monitors, you will see drawings like this and chart about the uniformity of the display they have tested. Okay, why is it, for, why is it this way and why is it uh, that important to know about? Because when you do the calibration of a monitor, you will have one nice C profile that covers the entire monitor. It doesn't take care of if the uniformity of the screen is good or not as good. And to be honest, there are only a very few um, 
monitors on this uh, planet who have a tool to cover the uniformity and to adjust the uniformity. These are the hardware calibrated monitors which are on the high end range. So that means if you go on those who are $2,000 or even up to $4,000. Some of these, they have functions to cover the uniformity. They have out of the box a really high quality uniformity. But if you go to a monitor, let's say $1,000 or $500 or even less, the uniformity is not as good as those high-end models. So, but why is it good to know about? If you know about your monitor and you see what about the uniformity and the brightness uniformity and the color uniformity and you can measure this and you find out, okay, on the low right area, your monitor, let's say it's 10% darker compared to what we've seen in the middle of the screen. As you can't correct this, at the first glance, this seems to be not important, but it is. If you do image editing work and you edit an image, let's say you want to uh, create a, a large format canvas print. Okay, so you send this to a service provider and you co uh, it costs you a lot of money and um, you edit your image. So what you will do, you will take some time because that's important for you. Okay, no problem. We do this and we find out, okay, at the lower right edge of that image, it gets a little bit dark. And you're working in soft proof so that you can see what will be the printing result at the end. And then you discover, okay, in the lower right edge, it's a little bit too dark. What can you do? You just move the image, the window of the image, that the lower right edge is laying in the middle of the screen and then you can see, okay, it was dark because your monitor is darker down there or it was dark because inside the image there's not enough information. So push up a little bit and you get a perfect result. What's the advantage? Every okay. friend of you will um, admire the image even if you don't do, but you will see it in your living room every day and you don't want to reprint this because it costs you a lot of money. So okay. this is a really well, helpful information. Honor. Yeah. Okay, Boris, it's a lot of different features, but um, could you explain a bit or put it in a nutshell, which spider is the correct one for me? Yeah, that's that's the point. And therefore, we have said, okay, we have a lot of information, as you mentioned, Oliver. And we say, okay, we will do it the other way around now. We say, okay, what are your demands? And we have set up five, seven different questions or situation or demands you will need. So let's take away the question marks here and say, okay, for those who say, I want to have a very simple calibration, we call it a four step simple calibration. And you say, okay, I have a laptop and at home I have a secondary uh, monitor to attach. So for those who say, okay, I want to have it easy and simple to handle. I don't want to take all these details. Okay, let's have a look. So these two to go. Okay, so if you're under that um, situation, please go for the Spider 5 Express. For all those who say, okay, I want to know more about my monitor. I want to um, have the function, uh, function of adjusting the brightness, matching to the printout, because printout is important for me, either because you print yourself uh, your images with your own printer, or you send them to a printing service. You are doing, let's say, photo books and so on. And um, you want to do this, and you also maybe have more than one monitor uh, attached to your computer. So if you're in that situation, let's have a look. So multi-monitor calibration, display analysis, cool. and brightness matching to the printout. Okay, good. That's for the Spider 5 Pro. And for everybody else who say, okay, I want to have a front projector calibration. I do video work. Um, 
I have multi-monitor calibration. I not just want to have a simple analysis of my settings of my display that my display offers. I want to know, okay, what about uniformity? I have the best quality, the professional display analysis. I have more than one monitor and I work with them as one large desktop. So they have to be adjusted among each other. Okay, let's have a look. Multi-monitor, brightness adjustment, front projector calibration, professional analysis, and adjusting the displays among each other. When you say, okay, yes, this is something what I need, it's time to go for the Spider 5 Elite. And as Oliver mentioned, we have a lot of information here, and that's the reason why we listed this into this table here, because you see, you don't have to go for the slides when you do uh, have a look at the recording here. We have this listed down here in the table, and I will not explain this table because we have seen all this uh, information, but to see them here next to each other, this table is the right. So if you go to the recording, just stop here and check what is your selection, what will be your Spider 5 to go for. Okay, so that was the information we would like to give you, and if you need additional information here, you get access to our free phone support and uh, the customer service, so please call us in the U.S. at 609-985-7409, and uh, if you may, <laughs> our holiday in Europe, there's also a European toll-free yeah. number. You, you, <clears throat> sure, sorry, you mixed a bit up a few of the numbers. It's Oops, 609, it's 609-895-7409. So, okay. um, just to, <laughs> to <Okay>. repeat it. <laughs> sorry. Okay, and for those who are, um, say, okay, um, I need some more detailed information, I have some questions, please feel free to access uh, our customer service via the online ticket system. You have the ability to access this 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you just go via the uh, welcome page from the Spider 5 or just uh, by the uh, support and contact the customer support by filling out that support form and that makes sure that some uh, uh, basic information will be also given to the support and to make it easier to get a feedback here. Okay, and uh, there's more information if you want. Um, have a look at our website. We have webinars and uh, there are more webinars to come, so please feel free to register. They are free of charge, and they are not only focusing on calibration. And of course, in these webinars, we explain more about the background, we explain the tips and tricks, what you can do to set up your own workspace and so on, and to have the best out of the calibration tools you have from Data Color and more information on, let's say, other applications like uh, Lightroom and uh, Photoshop, handling these uh, tools, and uh, information on how to use the correct settings in those applications when you do your prints and so on. Okay, that's it here, and this will take us now in the situation that you please enter all the questions you have, and uh, uh, I would like to say thank you, and we have now...